This will be a revival series over a 1974 Volkswagen Super Beetle. This car was neglected for many years and left to rot in a field last being on the road in 2002. So here's the registration sticker. 2002 is when it was on the road. When I first picked the car up, I thought it was a lot cleaner. Um, I mean, fender's all whacked up. <clears throat> this is all dented in. These are all rotted in. I am not a Volkswagen guy. The only thing I know is it's got a really small engine and it's air cold. On both sides, it's busted out. This fender's pretty beat up. <clears throat> I got both of the uh, the brake, the housings for the lights. Got a big dent right here. The roof's pretty beat up. It looks like it was in a hailstorm. On the picture when I bought it, they had a it had a side, but for some reason, it's now broken. Um, it was like that when I picked it up. Floors. Um, Floors are pretty crispy. Dash is pretty crispy. Be cool if this radio worked. I do have keys, but I think on these cars, like it's air cold, so I think it runs through the like this channel or something, like the rocker panel. <clears throat> like I said, I have no idea. Let's see if we have a clutch. Yep, brake pedal went straight to the floor. There's all my fuses. Let me go ahead and figure out where the battery goes on this thing. <clears throat> and I know it's not locked up. I did check that before I bought it. That's the only thing I checked was to see if it was locked up. Oil. It's not bad. Check this out. Um, tell me if, if this is common. If anybody knows about these Volkswagens on this pulley here, it's it's all rotted out. I mean, it's completely rotted out. I had I actually ordered a new pulley, so that was part of the kit or all the stuff I got. I got a new belt, calf rotor, plugs, wires. So apparently these are four cylinders. <clears throat> hmm, should be pretty easy. It does turn over, so crap. Okay. Let me go grab a battery. I guess apparently the batteries, the batteries go in under the seat. Good thing we don't have a seat. It would make it a little bit easier. I guess before I tighten it down, I might want to touch the cables onto the battery and we'll see anything sparks or catches on fire let me turn this key off yo or anything so far so good Let's see if the flashers work hey look at that dude freaking flashers work key on nothing maybe I have to push the clutch in nothing is there a special trick to... Turn signals work. 
horn works. Wow, the horn. Freaking horn works. Radio? No radio. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and read through this uh, owner manual and try to figure out if I can get this sucker to figure out what's going on with the wiring on it. Okay, so this is obviously why you read the manual on these old cars. New safety requirement. According to the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard number 208, section 7.4, for added safety, the 74 model is equipped with an ignition switch slash safety belt interlock. One, what is an interlock? Engine ignition and safety belt system for the front seats are in interconnected. To start the engine, follow these steps. Sit down, buckle up, turn key, Otherwise, engine cannot be started. So the seats on the passenger side are out and then the driver's side has a little pressure sensor on the seat and it is disconnected. So I'm probably just gonna bypass all that just so I can turn the motor over. So we'll have to figure that out real quick. Basically, it's a safety feature. So whenever you sit down in the seat, there's a switch and it tells the car, hey, there's somebody in the, in the vehicle. And then you have to buckle the seat belt and the seat belt buckle has a switch. And then that tells that makes it where you can engage the starter but if you number two it says if you turn if you take your seatbelt off while you're driving it'll the engine will still be running it'll just flash on the safety seatbelt light so basically what I'm thinking is all it does is it kills the power to the starter it doesn't kill the power to the actual um, the ignition so let me do some research and figure out how to bypass those seats and we'll go from there Okay, so as far as the interlock system goes for the seat belts to where it kills the starter, um, that system has been bypassed by the previous person. Um, there's a relay on the back of this fuse panel, and there's two terminals. If you pull that relay out, you can actually jumper the terminals, and it bypasses all of the, um, the, the interlock. It's called an interlock system. Um, so basically, what I found out so far this little red wire goes to the starter. So I'm gonna hook a wire from here to the battery and see if we if the starter even works. And if, I, if I figure out the starter works, I'm gonna go from there and I'll work my way up to the ignition switch. Last thing that could be bad is the ignition switch. So let's see if we can get the starter to crank. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a jumper wire, wrap it around right here. And make sure we're in neutral. Yeah, it's spinning over really fast. So our starter's good. Wire to the starter is good too. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my voltmeter on the incoming wire and turn the key and see if I have power coming to that wire. And I do know there's a relay back here and all the connections are corroded. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace, just because I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the connections because that window has been broken out. So I know it's been getting rained on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all those connections, replace them. And then we'll see if we have 12 volts back to this red wire. If I end up, if, if I can't figure out what it is, I'll just go ahead and install a starter button on the dash. And you can just turn, I'll, it'll basically be turn the key on and then just push the start button. Um, I'd really like to, to keep it as original as possible, but yeah, we'll go from there and see what happens. All right, so the bad connectors are replaced on the, that relay, it turns out it's actually the, fuel pump relay is what it says whenever i look it up and then the starter wire i replaced the connector on that and then taped it up so it wouldn't get shorted um, i'm gonna go ahead and pop the bonnet i think it's like right here or something and then i think that's it and check the wiring under the hood. Okay. There's a spare tire in there. There's a wasp nest. Some eggs. 
There's some lizard eggs in there. <clears throat> All right. I guess if it has a fuel pump relay, it's got to have a. There's got to be a what you call it pump on it. Uh, an electrical pump. I think all of our wiring is actually. That's empty. So our, I, I guess our wiring is underneath the dash. Let me see if I can figure out. See if I can figure out what wire goes to the switch, off the switch, to the fuse panel, out to the starter. Um, if I can't figure that out, then who cares? I'm just going to go ahead and run a wire straight to the starter or to this wire back here, and then just get it to turn over, because I just want to drive it. All right, guys. So what it boils down to is my ignition switch is bad because I have power going in and then when I turn the key this white and red wire is supposed to feed power out into the red and black wire that goes to the starter um, whenever I turn the key I'm getting one volt so the, probably the ignition switch is actually corroded so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this jumper off and I'm just going to put it straight to power so I'm going to turn the key on and then I'm gonna go spray some starter fluid um, into the intake and see if I can get this thing to, to fire over. If I can get it to fire over, then I'll move forward from there and rig up a button, a starter button. It looks like somebody was messing with it because there's a new fuel filter, but what I'm gonna do is, I got some carburetor cleaner, that's flammable. Um, then I have some two stroke gasoline since it's been sitting for so long, um, it'll help kind of lubricate things. I mean, realistically, you could put anything in your gas. You could put um, a marble, mix a little bit of marble mystery oil in the gas, a little bit of uh, just regular oil, um, just some regular, you know, 1030 oil, transmission fluid, any kind of lubricant mixed in with the gasoline is going to be better than nothing. That way you don't get that real dry start. So now I need to see if I'm getting power to my coil. Probably should check these wires too before, before I even started. So this looks like an oil pressure or a temperature sensor. <coughs> looks like our throttle cable is working. It's just a little stick. Okay, let's check for spark. Well, let's check for power to the, going to the coil. That hose is gonna need to be replaced. Um, <clears throat> okay, power to the coil. I'll go ahead and find the ground. Okay, so we do have power to our coil. If you're trying to start an old car and you don't have one of these, I suggest you get one. This lets you see the the spark in there whenever you're trying to start it or turn it over. Now these spark plug wires actually don't look bad at all. Oh yeah, here's one thing on these Volkswagens. You want to check. It's called in play. This will tell you. It'll give you kind of an idea of how worn out the motor is. You take the crank pulley and you just wiggle on it back and forth. This really barely. It barely has any play in it. I mean, I've never tested one, but from from the pictures and videos that I watched, it seemed to be pretty normal. So, all right. So we have power on our coil. Uh, make sure I turn the key off. Let's just see if we have spark. Alright, 
so I didn't see spark from my my camera so if we know we're getting voltage if we know we're getting voltage to the coil then most likely <clears throat> either our coil's bad or the points are dirty it's probably dirty points 99.9999% of the time it's just dirty points so whoa what in the world oh my gee holy moly that is bad can y'all see that? What in the world? It's pretty dirty, pretty corroded. Um, so, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna say that I'm probably not cleaning those points. I'm gonna try to though. Remember, I bought new, new points, a new rotor, and a new cap, so I'll go grab some sandpaper. I'll be right back. I already know for sure the reason why it was parked um, was probably due to the starter um, or that ignition. Um, that ignition is definitely bad. So, the switch. I'll tell you what, though, parts for these cars are actually really cheap. I, whenever I, I went on rockauto.com and I got a rotor, cap, points, wires, plugs, belt, a new crank pulley, um, fuel pump, I got the carb rebuild kit, I got an air filter, I mean just everything, rotor, um, cap, points, um, all the brake parts, hoses, wheel cylinder, um, master cylinder, um, and it all was about about a thousand bucks. So pretty much every everything maintenance-wise on this car from Rock Auto with shipping, it was like about uh, it was like bare, just over a thousand. All right, throw this cap back on there. What's up, Carrie? Let's see if we can get the. Um, probably have one of the kids check for spark. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, Ezra. Uncle Nick's making videos. What? You want to help me, Ezra? I would love to, but he's trying to look. Uh, he would love to, but he's trying to. What's he? What he say? I'm trying to look at something. Yeah. Ezra, you want to see? This is an engine, and it's look. It's in the trunk. How cool. Do you want to check out the engine? Ezra, come here. But I'm looking at the engine. The engine's not over there. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. It's uh, in the back. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. That's the engine. Can one of y'all check something for me? Huh? Can you come check something for me? I'm going to turn the engine over. Uh, well, I'm holding the baby. No, uh, just you see that right there. Mm -hmm. If tell me if it's strobing like light, like tung tung tung, like strobing. Okay. Is it gonna be loud? No. Uh, if it starts, it will. But I don't think so. It's hard to tell because it's like shaking and it's metal. You can't see it moving. Um, I don't think so. No. Do it again. I'm gonna turn the engine over. You see that thing right there? I got it. There's a little light bulb in there. If you see it like flashing, like a, just a little bit, maybe just really faint, like a little bit of a flash. Can you tell me? Right there, you see mm -hmm. it? Right there, watch it. Tell me if you see it flashing. It's 
it's flashing. It is? Yeah. Where at? Right here. Right here? Like. Perfect, thank you. Now, no, check this. Huh? Check one more thing for me. Okay, so we know we have spark from the coil. So our point should be good. <laughs> Now, I'm going to connect it again to this one. Can you tell me if you see anything? Mm -hmm. Up into your hand. Oh. <clears throat> You saw it flash though? Uh, yeah, it was one time. It was flashing red. One time. It was flashing red. Probably a weak spark. I'm going to go ahead and replace the rotor and the cap. Check out this cap. It's see through. Let's see if that gets it going. Because I'm thinking since I have spark going from the coil to the cap flashing from what my kid told me and then but once I go out of the cap it's not flashing so it's probably the connection point in here <clears throat> I don't know if I put that on right I have to check the firing order let's see if we have spark Booyah! Got it. Hold on, babe. I can't Did you hear it? Did it start too? Yeah, it started. So it's a mechanical fuel pump. I have no idea why it's the manual says fuel relay. Um, got some hoses I need to replace. So I guess really what I need to do is just hook up a tank, a boat tank or a little gas jug. And see if the carburetor is okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some penetrating fluid on this throttle cable. See if I can get the throttle to free up. And then, I mean, this sat for 20 years, so I'm I'm pretty sure that the carburetor is, is not good. It's probably not gonna be okay. So, I do have a carb rebuild kit. But it didn't really smoke at all. Yeah. So. Okay, so I was able to free up this um, throttle cable by using some lubrican. Um, I call it lubrican because cant is negative and can is positive, so lubrican. Also, it's kind of like a play on words because it's in a can. So it's lubrican because it can lube, and it's also in a can. So we got lub lubrican, and I was able to free up the throttle. So it only sticks halfway, <clears throat> and 
should be good for today. I'll come back tomorrow and get the fuel system going. All right, so it's the next day. Um, what I want to do is I want to remove the um, fuel sending unit and look down inside of that tank and uh, see how clean that tank is. Um, if it looks decent and the fuel pickup, you know, doesn't look too bad, I'll go ahead and put a couple gallons of gas in it and I'll throw that new fuel pump on it and see if I can pump some fuel up there. Um, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll disconnect the line and I'll take my leaf blower and uh, put some uh, carburetor cleaner inside the line and then I'll blow the line out. It's actually really nice they put this fuel tank underneath the trunk, the underneath the hood. Kind of kept it from getting all rusty. This uh, fuel sending unit should come out pretty easy. What the heck? Look how clean that tank is. Yeah, that tank is spotless. That is amazing. I wonder if the gas was drained when before it was parked. Okay. Yeah, I'm I have no worries about this tank at all. Looks like the fuel line is over here on the right. So I'll go ahead and stick the um stick the float or put the sending unit back in because that is that tank is spotless. Go ahead and seal that up put some gas in it put the new fuel pump on it with a filter and then see if i can crank it over and get some gas to the carb um i'm not expecting that carburetor carburetor to work so we'll just have to go from there and uh worst case i got a carburetor kit um i'll pull the carb rebuild it and then i need to put the pulley on so it doesn't overheat but hmm well I reckon if I'm gonna be working on this thing for any period of time, I might as well go grab me a seat. I'll be right back. There we go. That's the lazy bucket right there. Like a lazy boy. That's the lazy bucket. <clears throat> All right, so the rain's really coming down now. Um, I'm gonna try to do as much work as I can. I need to get like a little canopy or something, but um, I went ahead and put five gallons of gas in the tank. I turned the key on and the fuel gauge went from empty. It's still in the red zone, it's still in empty, but so five gallons should, I think five gallons should be like what? Like a quarter of a tank or something like that at least. So fill, something's probably just a, uh, the connections a little corroded in there. Uh, maybe even just filling it all the way up and, and letting that send that float and that sending unit kind of jiggle around it may end up fixing the that problem um with the corrosion so i'm gonna go ahead and turn the engine over a little bit and see if our fuel filter picks up um i put a little bit of star, uh, starting fluid in in the carburetor <laughs> No gas yet. <clears throat> I don't see any leaks under the car. Nothing yet. This terminal broke off, but I don't know where it was. It was unhooked and then it broke off. So if you know where off of the harness, the white wire with the Looks like a green stripe. If you know where that goes, let me know. Cause the only thing, other thing that it could be is the oil, no, the, no, this is the oil pressure, I believe. And then this must be temperature. Okay, so I got the new fuel pump on, got that hose replaced. Um, I kind of 
half half butt fix that. Let's go ahead and turn it over. See if it pumps up the fuel and see if we can get it to idle on. Okay, so the carburetor is definitely shot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the carburetor off and rebuild it. I do know whenever I was spinning it over, um, the oil pressure light turned off. Wait a second, and then it would turn back. It would turn back on. So once it once the car died, so I so we have oil pressure and the pressures the sensors working. So that's that's good. Alright, so here's the accelerator pump. It's pretty rough. Out with the old and in with the new. Alright, so I got the carburetor rebuilt. I replaced some wiring that was broken and corroded. Um, I think I have it put back together the right way because I just ripped it all apart. Um, I have an accelerator pump. You can hear it. So uh, I know I have a accelerator pump, but I, I don't know how well I cleaned out the passages in there. So we'll see. But uh, I'm going to give it a couple pumps and see if it'll fire up and idle. I forgot to record it but pretty much the way I took this pulley off was there's a little slot right here you can stick your screwdriver in there and I don't have a um, I think it was a 30 millimeter wrench but I don't have one so I just took a pipe wrench and broke it loose it came off pretty easy and I put some penetrating fluid on there I know this pulley is probably going to be stuck because like I showed earlier it's all the way rotted out. I'm gonna do it where the keyway do it where the keyway is facing up. That way it's easier to put on and I'm not fighting it. go got my rock auto pulley I think I paid I paid like $12 for this and maybe $5 for the belt so I just went original OEM or OEM style All right, so I got the dash put back together. And here's my little starter button. 
I got the battery taken out, but Ugh. and I, I definitely have a leak in my fuel system because I put five gallons in the tank and now I have no gallons in the tank. So I got a little jug hooked up to the, the fuel pump. Go ahead and twist on the key and see if we can get it to idle. <clears throat> if I can get it to idle, we'll go ahead and find some, some, some new shoes for it at the used tire shop and then uh and then we need to fix that fuel leak in the gas tank that way we can use the original gas tank yeah i'm just gonna have to replace the points okay so new points new condenser rotor cap and i'm about to replace the spark plug wires all right we got new cap rotor plug wires condenser points um fixed all the wiring connections take i don't even know what the number's at at this point The generator light went off, the oil light went off, so we have oil pressure, we have um, uh, our generator's charging. I put it in first gear and it moved forward a little bit, clutch is working, I put it in reverse and move, re move backwards, so boom. Okay, so I gave up on the original carburetor. What I have here is an Amazon Special. This is a $50 carburetor from Amazon. So, you know I have high, high hopes for this one. I mean, think about it, the carburetor rebuild kit is probably like 15, 20 bucks. So, extra, what, 30, 40 bucks you get. Just get a whole nother carburetor. But I think the problem with this one is, is I didn't clean it out good enough because I'm running on the accelerator pump. So while I'm running it, I'm having to kind of tap the gas and give it a, and like make this accelerator pump pump gas into the throttle or into the intake. So like, let's say I hold the gas down like halfway or a quarter, it'll run for a little bit and it'll start to sputter out and I got to give it a little bit more gas and it'll start to sputter out get, until it's almost full throttle. And then it's, you know, so the passages aren't clear in there so it's not getting you know your normal <clears throat> it's not able to idle so what i'll do is i'm sure i'll end up buying another one of these cars so what i'll do is i'll, I'll slap this sucker on there and then um i'll probably soak this in like some evapor rust or something and <laughs> go over it one more time uh throw it on another car or, or who knows put it back on this car if this one ends up ever going bad all right i'm gonna throw this on there and then we'll move forward fingers crossed Okay, so it's running it's running decent, but uh, I really need to change the oil. <laughs> like I said, I'm not really used to these engines, but it sounds a little a little ticky or a little knocky. I mean, I don't know if that's normal or I know I've I've I've, I've heard these. I got a neighbor that has one, and 
she drives by and it sounds real ticky but but uh but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and pull the wheels off and then what time is it three o'clock probably have to go tomorrow and pick some tires up and then tomorrow we'll be able to fire it up and roll cruise around a little bit so the lights work the headlights work running lights work That run light works, that one doesn't. So, license plate light works. Looks like we only have one light out. Pretty sweet. Um, turn signal. Left. Right. Or left, left. <laughs> Horn works. Both the right turn signals work. Wipers work. <clears throat> so it looks like the only thing that doesn't work is the the right running light, or was it right? Or, which one? I think it was the left. I don't know. One of the running lights doesn't work, and then once I get uh, some fluid inside of the. Uh, the master cylinder will be able to see if the brake lights work. This thing's ready to go. It's already it's already a daily driver. <clears throat> okay, next task. Tires off. I really don't want to drive it that long without replacing on the oil. So Honestly, I'll probably throw the tires on and then run it into the shop. And then from there, I'll go ahead and do the brakes, oil change. And then I got to figure out why the tank's leaking. Because the tank looks spotless. I'm assuming that um, the line, the rubber line off the tank is probably eaten up by rats. So, all right, move forward. <clears throat> all right. Let's see if we can get this thing to hold air. Oh, I turn the air on. What? No way. So it aired up, but it's uh, right where it was sitting on the ground. That bead is all rusty and nasty, so I'm going to have a limited amount of time as far as this tire goes. Try to air it up and, and haul butt. Yeah, so it's looking like I'm going to have to get new tire or used tires. This one, this one wouldn't even air up at all. So, and that one that I got to air up, it was, uh, it's already going flat. <clears throat> Yep, it's already flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop all the tires off and tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, I'll go ahead and um, go to the tire shop. But while I got the tires off, I might as well pop a couple of these dents out. Like you can see that dent right there. There was a dent right here, if y'all remember, and I was able to give it one good whack and pop them out, so. Boom, there you go.
go ahead and pick up some used tires. So, might as well take the wagon. Roll up in style. put the good years up front because they're matching and then the mismatch I'll put in the rear and they didn't have 165s they didn't have 165 so I had to I had to get us a, a 175 so I'm gonna put these on. I'm gonna put these on and see if we can roll this sucker. I mean, what are the odds? I finally get the thing running. I got tires put on it. I got two tires put on it. And then it freaking starts raining. Just pouring down. So. I, I ran the uh, ran the Plymouth into the shop. Got a little bit wet in the inside, and of course, I don't have a um, driver uh, quarter glass. So, literally, I, I was I was about to bring the car into the shop to start cleaning it up, and it starts pouring rain. So the inside's going to be just sopping wet, which not too bad because there's no carpet, but. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go run, uh, grab a raincoat and go throw those last two tires on. The Volkswagen gods don't want me to drive the car for some reason. So I got the, the tires on. I even put the hubcaps on it. So these tires are wider than the original, but they're, skin they're smaller. They're, they're skinnier, so it looks really funny. But uh, I don't care as long as it works. So I'm going to go ahead and put some brake fluid in before I try to test drive it. I think it goes in this little reservoir right here. And uh, since I'm going to go ahead and do a complete brake job on this, I'm just going to pour in some old uh, um, recycled brake fluid in it. Because I'm sure it's going to leak. So I don't want to waste my good brake fluid. Hopefully this is it. I guess we'll find out. 
All right, all right, all right. Cap on it. And let's go ahead and give the brake pedal a couple, a couple squishies. Well, that master cylinder is shot. So I ordered another one from Rock Auto. It's, it's in my little parts box. So I don't know, maybe it'll come back around. Let's try to keep squishing it.
Okay. All right, so I think that's it for our Super Beetle. So stay tuned. Um, on the next one, we're gonna do the brakes and clean it up.